driver, green running light. Honey. Oh, honey. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, Peggy. Been waiting long? No, we just finished packing and the maid's gone home. I really haven't had time to worry about your being late. But you might say you missed me just a little. Well, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, was doing a little shopping this afternoon and uh, thought you might like this. Oh, Jim, a diamond bracelet. Like it? Oh, Mr. Mallory, you have a good lecture coming to you for being such a spendthrift. Lavishing costly gifts like this on a woman and your wife, too. But you uh, you do like it, don't you? Oh, of course I like it. <laughs> that woman wouldn't. Put it on. I'm going to wear it tonight, even if it doesn't go with these clothes. Oh, but Jim, I'm really sincere when I tell you not to be so generous with me. We can't afford it yet. Oh, sure we can afford it. My trucking business is getting better every month. Before long, I'll be able to buy more trucks, branch out. Honey, I tell you, business is good. But I've been reading about those gangs out on the roads taking trucks. Suppose they did that to your trucks. Wouldn't that ruin your business? Now, don't you worry your pretty little head about those things. It isn't the truck owners, honey, that it hurts. It's, it's the bonding people, the insurance companies. They've been hit pretty hard. But so far, I've been lucky. Well, you can't expect even your luck to last always. That's all the information I can give you now. I'll call you later. Yes. You fellas weren't very successful with this assignment. Not yet. I sent that truck out as bait. Gave you two armed detectives to drive it. A fast car to follow it, so you'll be on hand when they try to grab it. But we did get the truck back. I set a perfect trap, and the best you can report is we lose both our detective drivers. And the hijackers get away with our truck right under your very nose. By the time we caught up with the mob, they were heading it off with our truck. Both our drivers have been killed. We chased them, but they abandoned the load and got away. So, after laying this elaborate and surefire trap, the only thing you bring back is the bait. We still got a chance. Our drivers were approached by a girl in the lunchroom. When they left, she went right to a phone booth. When she came out, I had her picked up. Her call went to the private line in the trucking office. What trucking office? Here you are, Mr. Howard. Why, it couldn't be. Which might prove that his trucking business is just a front for his hijacking work. Well, that's reason enough to pick him up for questioning. And uh, just in case this fellow is your man, you'd better be prepared for trouble. Take Leonard along with you. Oh, but Mr. Howard, I figured on going to the hospital. The doctor said our baby might be born tonight. As soon as you make this arrest, you can run along to the hospital. Sure, as soon as we make the arrest, I can bring him down to the station myself. Oh, swell, Steve, thanks. My wife certainly will appreciate that. You see, I promised to be with her when our son is born. <laughs> it's our first. Yes? You're Mrs. Mallory? Yes. We're looking for Jim Mallory, your husband. Well, Mr. Mallory's very busy. We're just leaving on a trip. Well, I guess he'll see us all right. You tell him Burke and Mort are here. We've got to see him right away. No, well, come in. I'll tell him. Jim. Yes? Jim, two men are here to see you. One of them seems to be hurt. They said you'd know them. Uh, Burke and Mort. Oh, oh yes. Uh, yeah, they're two of my drivers. Uh, Draw it up for me, will you, honey? I won't be a minute. What's the matter? Mort's hurt. Well, you didn't have to bring him here. I couldn't take him to a hospital with a bullet in his arm. Shh. So we've been hijacked, huh? Well, darling, I guess you were right. My luck has changed. Take him up to my room. Now, don't worry, dear. He's not badly hurt. Well, why not take him to the hospital? There's a good reason, Peggy. We'll have to take care of him here. I'm sorry about that trip. We'll have to take him next weekend. Oh, I don't mind, Jim, about our weekend being spoiled, but I don't understand why an injured man can't be taken to the hospital. Is there something you're trying to hide? Yes. Uh, you see, Mort is one of my drivers. He was shot by hijackers while he was protecting one of my trucks. Well, I still don't see what that has to do with his being brought here. Of course you don't, Peggy, but it's, it's like this. I can't afford to have it known that I've been hijacked. Once it gets out, the insurance rates on my truck cargoes will go sky high. It's better for me to take the loss on one truck than let the insurance company know that I've been picked on by hijackers. Oh, but what if he dies? Oh, he won't die. Now, you run along and get a basin of hot water and some bandages. I'll take care of him. 
Oh, but you don't know how. This is Mallory's place. Hope he's in. I hope so. I don't want to lose any time getting my wife at the hospital. What are you jumping on me for? Quiet. Get in the living room there. Boys, you're through. I can't use you anymore. Well, we got the truck all right, but we had to dump it and run. I knew better than to leave Mort where he might be picked up. Hey, will you fellas cut out to yapping and do a little figuring the way I'm going to hide out? All right, but keep your mouth shut around here. My wife says the only thing about this business. Of all the fool things to do. How'd you bungle the job? Well, maybe we didn't do all the bungling. That truck you picked for us was red hot. Why, the drivers were even cops with a car full of them trailing us. How do you know they were cops? That's right, boss. We wouldn't have jumped them if we'd known who they were. We didn't see a badge until we'd cracked the second one. You mean you killed two cops? Well, Mort, we're going to have to take you someplace else. I'm not taking any chances of the cops cracking down on this house. Not with my wife here. Why not? This is as good as any place for a hideout. Suppose we take them up to your cabin. Nothing doing. You're a couple of smart guys, all right. Parking that car of yours out in front of my house. There's a couple of cops out there now looking it over. We're sure in a jam. Say, that car's been driven a long ways and fast, too. The motor's still hot. Oh, Jim, there are two men out in front examining that car. Yes, yes, I know. I, I just saw them. Must be a couple of those hijackers that don't like what Burke and Mort did to them. I guess they're coming here to talk to me. Well, shall I call the police? No, it's too late for the police to help us now. We've got to help ourselves this time. Listen, honey. You go out the back way and get the car in the driveway and keep it there. We'll be right with you. Now hurry. There's a pool of blood in there and a bullet hole. Well, that proves I did hit one of them. Proves more than that. Proves there's more than just Mallory in there. There's at least one other man. Maybe we better get help. Oh, wait, Steve. Let's don't do that. We can take him ourselves. That would mean a promotion. With my wife in the hospital, I could use a raise in pay. Uh -huh. I can use one, too. Maybe that new kid of yours can use a father, too. Oh, but Steve, we've done it before without asking for help. Well, one of us better go around the back way. Okay. I'll take the front. Don't waste any time getting around there. Mort, you fellas go back in there. I'll stall until she gets the car. What can I do for you? Your name Mallory? Yeah. Just a minute, sister. Where do you think you're going? Stop this car! You'll spend your weekend in jail. Huh? Come on, put him out. Any news from the wife yet? Now, don't worry. I've got a call into the hospital. I'll hear any minute now. There's a gentleman out in the hall to see you, a Mr. Howard. Thanks. Hello, Howard. Any improvement in Leonard's condition? None. And with his wife in the hospital expecting a baby, he keeps asking about her all the time. That's all that's keeping him alive. I just came from the hospital. A baby was born. It's a boy. Eight pounds. Oh, that's great. How's his wife? All right. Only uh, she keeps asking for Leonard. We better tell her. Wait. 
If Leonard should die, you and I are going to have a tough time keeping his wife from knowing for a while. How did you explain to her why he can't be with her? I told her he was out on a case for me. If you want to see him, you better come in now. Well, pal, little Steve's here. Oh, swell. Eight pounds. Eight? What do you know? Yeah. How's my wife? She's fine. You won't let her know about me. Not the way she is. She thinks you're out on a case. Steve. Yeah. Couldn't I see my boy? Just once? Only for a second. I wonder if that could be arranged. Well, at least it's worth trying. Are you going to see your boy? Tom? Tom! He's gone. He'll never see his boy. If that Mallory woman had knocked me off that car, this wouldn't have happened. If it takes the rest of my days, I'll find her. why you were never worried about losing your trucks to the hijackers. I tried to operate an honest trucking business at first, but it couldn't be done. Then why didn't you let me know what you were doing? At least I could have decided not to be the wife of a criminal. That's exactly what I was afraid of, Peggy. If you found out about it, then I'd lose you. You knew I had to learn it sometime. Oh, I thought I'd make enough to quit before then. <laughs> if I hadn't been sucker enough to fall for that baited truck, I could have bought you the world with a gold fence around it. You weren't thinking very much me into driving that car after you shot a man. I didn't shoot him. Well, I didn't either. But because I drove the car when you escaped, I'm wanted for murder. And that makes me a part of your gang. Well, I'm going to tell them I never was of it and I never will be. Oh, sweetheart, if you weren't a part of it, you couldn't be with me now. But there's nothing you can do about it. They'll never believe you and you'll just spend the rest of your life in prison. Listen, sweetheart, I got plenty of money from this racket that I put aside. We can take it and go and live abroad. We can live swell till all this blows over and I can buy you all the things I've always wanted you to have. And we can live respectably. Thanks, Jim. But that isn't my idea of respectability. You've changed your mind about that, Peggy. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Jim? You bet. And when Morton Burke get here with the doc, I'll, I'll get on my feet again in a few days and we can get out of here. How do you plan to keep the doctor from telling the police when he leaves here? I don't have to let him leave here. If you bring a doctor here to save your life and then kill him, no matter what it means to me, I'll give myself up and testify against you. I believe you would. Well, nothing will happen to him if he does what he's told. Then... Then you won't kill him. No. Now listen, I want you to stay out of the room until Doc gets to working on me. When it's all over, I'll... I'll call for you. Get busy. Clear that away. Too bad to get you out of a warm bed so late at night. I'm used to that. 
Certainly. Most of my patients don't go about it quite the same way as these men here. Well, I'm sorry the boys got rough with you, Doc, but uh, I told them not to take any chances. How long ago were you shot? Two days. Why? Hmm. That just tallies with what I've been reading in the newspapers. Meaning what? You're Jim Mallory. Where's the woman? If you're referring to my wife, none of your business. Well, just natural curiosity to see a woman of her kind. All right, Doc, cut out the gab and get to work. Hey, don't use that. I want to know what's going on. If I'm going to operate, I'll do it my way. All right, but don't use that hypodermic. In your hands, that needle could be worse than a gun. And I'm not taking any chances. Uh, Mort here will see that you don't try any funny business. And if I'm responsible for what happens, I'm not taking any chances on your twitching while I'm operating. That would be too dangerous. And it'll be dangerous for you, Doc, if I don't come out of this. If anything happens to me, they'll bury us both together. Don't worry. I want you to live so they can hang you. Hey, Doc. Don't you think it's about time he came out of it? Are you sure you didn't try anything funny? Is that you, Mort? Yeah, boss. How do you feel? Boy, that Doc sure can put a guy to sleep. What time is it? Broad daylight, 7 o'clock. Yeah? Where's the Doc? Hey, get in here. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I'd better take your temperature. Wait a minute. What do you want? Will you kindly let me have my thermometer? What's the matter? Let him have his thermometer. Well, if I saw what he did to you with that needle, I'm not letting him get in this bag. Moore? Yeah. Ask my wife to come in here, will you? And you better knock before you go in there. The boys will fix you up something to eat. Never mind. I'll eat mine at home. <laughs> You're going to be awfully hungry by then, because you're staying right here till I get on my feet and can travel. Why, that may not be for days. Now, how will you have your eggs, Doc? Straight up or over? I'll have mine boiled. I'll take them out of the shells myself. She's not in there. I found this notice for you. Hmm? Give me a lift. What's the matter, boss? What's uh, up? Uh, Eric, take it easy. We're packing up and gonna find her. You better. She'll be picked up in no time. It won't take them long to make her talk. Uh, if you take my advice, you'll let her go, instead of throwing us all in jail. But I want your advice, I'll ask for it. But I'm gonna find her if I've had to break into jail to get her. All right, boys, come on. Get the doc in the other room there and tie him up. Come on, come on, get going. Oh, doc, I'm, I'm sorry to have to do this, but we'll... Uh, we let somebody know where you are, so we're in a safe place. You won't get very far in the condition you're in. Come on. Why don't you listen to reason? There's no use arguing with me. When my mind is made up, it's made up. When I say I quit, I quit. And you needn't bang my satchel around like that and bust everything in it either. 
I'm pretty good to drive you down to the railroad station. I should have let you walk the whole 10 miles and lug the bag yourself. You're the third cook that's quit in a month. I never would have taken the job in the first place if they told me it was 10 miles back in the wilderness. What difference does that make as long as you're getting paid for cooking? It makes a lot of difference when you're lonesome and don't get to see anybody to talk to for days. Oh, phooey! And I say to you! Oh, pardon me. What are you going to do about getting a new cook? Why? Well... You don't know where I get one, do you? I'd like the job. You mean you're a cook? Well, I can cook and I need work. You want this job after what she said about it? It can't be any worse than the place I just left. As a matter of fact, this is a swell job. And you'll be working for a swell boss. I kind of think the food will taste better to him when you cook it. Pretty classy, huh? Oh, it's lovely. But why does he want such a beautiful place so far away from everybody? That's just the reason. To get away from people that drive him crazy. You mean he never has any visitors? No one ever comes up here. He never lets anyone know when he's coming outside of me. Say, you ain't gonna quit in that account, are you? I'll get your company. Oh, no. I'd, I'd just as leave not have very many people to cook for. Good. Um, what does he do? Paints, pictures from magazines, advertising, and things like that. Uh, when he arrives tomorrow, how long will he stay? Oh, maybe a week, maybe a month. You never can tell what he might do. There's your room up there. Pretty classy, too. And I need, too. Would you mind sending me together some ham and eggs? All right. Scrambled, huh? Uh, what's your name? Red. All right, Red. <laughs> What? What's the matter? Huh? Hiya, boss. I thought I told you not to bring any women up here. I, uh... We didn't expect you until tomorrow. Yeah, I can see you didn't. Oh. This is the new cook. I had to get her when the last one quit. Oh, cook, huh? Uh-huh. Well, hurry up and get me some food. I want a rub down before dinner. Give them the rub down. I do that. I take care of him. Drive his car, and when we're in town, I'm his valet, too. Oh. Now, hurry and get some food, Bertie, and make it the best meal you ever cooked. Say, uh, you sure you can cook? Oh, yeah. On you on the great hunt for Mallory. A bulletin has just been phoned in by the sheriff of Greene County. A car believed to have been used by Mallory's wife in her desperate escape from her husband's hideout Tonight was located just off a highway in one of the county's loneliest sections. Police were combing the district tonight in a quick move to locate the female fugitive's place of hiding. That's all for tonight. We'll be on the air again tomorrow morning with the latest developments of this sensational case. Good night. If our men can pick up Mrs. Mallory, it'll be only a matter of time till we have our hands on him. As far as I can gather, He's crazy enough about her to fight through anything to get to her. You're right, and we can take advantage of that. All we'd have to do is set an ambush with his wife as bait. Mallory and the rest of his gang would walk right into it. And I want to be there when they do. <laughs> oh. Where is she? She's up in the room. Red, that girl is not a cook. I watched you at dinner, and did you eat? And what I ate tasted good, too. I didn't say the food wasn't good. You heard me. I said she's not a cook and never was one. I've never seen you in better spirits. You even forget to drink your after-dinner brandy. Stop your gibbering, Red. You know what I'm talking about. You noticed it, too. Noticed what? She had trouble remembering what her name was. But I uh, thought that... Uh... You can't think. Now, I'll find out about her. Come in. I'd like to... Oh, so you're reading philosophy, eh? Oh, I, I didn't just notice exactly what it was. How do you like it? It's much too deep for me. That's Schopenhauer. He tells the truth about women. Do you good to read it? I'm afraid I couldn't understand it. No woman wants to. 
He's the philosopher that tells about the deadliness of a female. He tells of their cunningness to express an innocence when lying in the interest of a cause. Why don't you read Nietzsche? Huh? He says that dreadful experiences may raise a question whether he who experiences them is not something dreadful also. Very good. Why should women despise Schopenhauer? After all, he teaches them how to beat men at their own game. What's the matter, Ben Stung? You might find it quite helpful to read more Aristotle or Roger Bacon. Just why are you masquerading as a servant? What's your racket? Racket? Did that hit home? My racket is cooking. Well, if you're a cook, I'm a crooner. Well, maybe you are a crooner. Did you ever try it? I'm an artist. Definitely? Definitely. But not knowing what you are, you'd better pack your things and I'll do my own cooking. Well, you'll have to eat it. Oh. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bannister, but he isn't here. Yes, I thought he would be. Hello, Mrs. Bannister. Hello, Claire. Well, this is an unexpected uh, pleasure. Well, we never dreamed you'd have company. Oh, uh, Mrs. Bannister, this is, uh, this is Miss... Anne Williams. Oh, yes, Anne, uh, this is Mrs. Bannister and her daughter. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, please. Do you care for some coffee? Love it. Oh, Anne, some coffee, if you don't mind. Yes. Please. If you don't mind, what should one do for a meal? Salam to her? Do you want a meal? Of course not, silly. I merely marvel that the well-known woman dodger should be so considerate of his servant. <coughs> oh, <laughs> you know, when we didn't find you at the studio, I said, Claire, he'll be up in his lodge. So you were. <laughs> and here we are. Oh, you naughty boy, the idea of running away and not inviting us. Well, it doesn't seem to have been necessary. What's that? And here you are, alone and forlorn. Forlorn, but not alone. Cream? Thank you. Sugar? No. Mrs. Bannister? No. Oh, perhaps you'd prefer tea. Why should I prefer tea? Oh, pardon, ma'am. I thought on account of your heart. Oh, how do you know about my heart? Well, I worked for a doctor once. You can tell by the color of the eye. Oh. Oh, there. Now, Claire, you see, everybody notices it. Oh, dear, I knew we shouldn't have come. I can't stand this altitude. Oh, dear. Oh, uh, would you excuse me if I lie down? Oh, yes, the uh, guest room is to the left. Oh, thank you. You brought your luggage, of course. Oh, yes, we did. Oh, uh, you see, we were going to... Claire, where were we going? Right here. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, dear. Sweet of you to invite us. Red, bring in the ladies' luggage. I've already got it. I hope I didn't say anything wrong, ma'am. I doubt if you could ever say anything wrong. May I? Not exactly a cookbook, is it? Oh, that I. Uh, you see, I was just trying to interest her in philosophy, and we were discussing uh, Schopenhauer, Aristotle, Roger Bacon, and others. How amazing! A philosophic cook, Aristotle with the orange juice, Schopenhauer with the toast, and Roger Bacon with the eggs. You know, it's a relief to occasionally find a woman who can listen. How long has she been listening? <laughs> Retired her today. Not so bad for the first day. See here, Claire. And what about it? You run out on me. You dodge me for weeks until I'm terribly hurt and sick and worried wondering what I've said or done to you. Why couldn't you have told me there was someone else in that virtuous heart of Bruce Dunning? More coffee, ma'am. No, thank you. Ma'am. You know, you're swell. Thank you. It's so nice to be appreciated. Sir? 
Between Jim Mallory and his wife, leaders of the notorious hijacking and murder gang, today rescued a country doctor kidnapped by the fugitives. Acting on the mysterious telephone tip, officers raided a secluded mountain cabin only to find the Mallorys and their confederates had vanished. Dr. Richardson, who had been kidnapped the night previously by Mallory, was found shackled in the cabin. The doctor gave a hair-raising account of his experiences while a captive. He had been forced to perform an operation on the seriously wounded Mallory and had been threatened with death should the operation fail. Mallory's wife, according to the doctor, deserted the gang during the night and fled in one of their stolen cars. Mallory, on discovering her flight, expressed his grim determination to find her, despite them's warning to him that an attempt on Mallory's part to travel in his weakened condition might cause a relapse and result in death. Oh. Oh, I, I couldn't sleep. The strange house, you know. I hope I didn't disturb you. You look lovely in that light. Thanks. Don't go. Well, the, the others... But I want to know more about you. I'm afraid that wouldn't be very interesting to a man of your philosophy. On the contrary. That's just the artist speaking. Maybe. Now, I wish I had the ability to paint and catch the beauty of your moods. But then I'm only an illustrator. Which reminds me that I'm only a servant. And your guests might resent my forgetting that. Oh, never mind them. I want to know more about you. Who you are. Where you came from. Why you suddenly happened into my life and changed my whole scheme of things. This doesn't sound very much like Schopenhauer. Must we go into that again? You don't hold that against me, do you? Mr. Dunning, what time do you want your breakfast tomorrow? What? I want you to press these for me tonight. Yes, sir. Must it be done tonight, Claire? Can it wait until morning? I want to wear them in the morning. That is, if you can spare her long enough to iron them for me. I'll be glad to do them for you. Well? Thanks for paying a little attention to me. You know, that was being pretty crude to her. I think she showed by far the best manners. Bruce, you know I'm pretty understanding about most matters. But aren't you being unusually attentive to uh, a servant? I thought that I ought to apologize to her for some of the incidents that happened earlier this evening. Of course, Mother and I were late in arriving, so I don't know what occurred to necessitate an apology. It was because my guests failed to see that Miss Williams is not an ordinary servant. Huh, I'd have to be blind not to see that. Who is that woman and how does she happen to be here? I think I told you all I know about her. Red hired her and brought her up here. So far, she's proved quite acceptable and very intelligent. Intelligent? So it's reached that stage. That's more than you've ever recognized in any woman. Now, see here, Claire, you're becoming impossible. Before I allow this to become a common brawl, I think I'll ask you to excuse me. If it weren't so late, I'd insist on leaving here tonight. I'll take you. You can take us in the morning. Just as you wish, Claire. Good night. Let me have my dress, please. Well, I haven't pressed it yet. And why not? Do you generally obey orders at your own convenience? No, but I thought I'd press it the first thing in the morning before you were up. Miss Williams, or whatever your name is, I don't think you're a servant at all. At least you lack the manner of a well-trained servant. I'm the cook here. Well, if you're like all the other cooks I've ever known, you might not be averse to uh, bettering your condition. That is, to accept a position that would pay better wages. Oh, but I really couldn't do that. And why not? Because that would necessitate my explaining to Mr. Dunning that one of his guests tried to bribe me to leave his service. And besides, I don't think he'd let me go. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? You've been well enough to travel for days now. You know, I think you're just stalling for time to try to find out where your wife is. Well, I'm not interested in finding her. I got trouble enough of my own looking out for my own hide. I'm not like Burke here. He'll do anything you tell him. But not me. That woman of yours ran out when it got too hot. 
She wasn't taking any chance on sticking with us. But you expect us to take a chance of getting caught by looking for her. And I suppose when you do know where she is, you expect me to risk my neck to bring her back. This time I'm telling you what's going to happen. I'm leaving here tonight. And I'm going alone. I'm all through looking for your wife. You know, that idea has been sneaking up on him for the last couple of days. Maybe we'll be better off when we're rid of him. Mark, take this with you. Tell her it's a couple of weeks' wages. She might not take it from me. Don't give it to her till after I leave. I hope Bruce doesn't ask his cook to drive to town with us. If he tries it, I shall get right out of the car. It's about time an issue was made out of his association with her. When well, I've given a great deal of thought about what happened last night. I'm very sorry for your sake that all this had to come about. Surely you can see that the attitude of my guests toward you will be greatly magnified by the time they reach town. That wouldn't do you any good. I'm sure you'll understand. Yes. That doesn't mean that I'm not to see you again. Wherever you go, I want you to get in touch with me at my studio. You will, won't you? Yes. Promise? I promise. And that, folks, brings us to the next important news item of the day. James Mallory, slayer and hijacker, was killed last night 10 miles west of Centerville when a passenger train crashed into the automobile which he was driving. Positive identification was made from personal papers found on the body of Mallory. Police today were pressing a relentless search for Mallory's wife, who is a fugitive on charges of murder committed by the hijacking gang. The woman last week engineered her husband's escape from police by driving the getaway car through a storm of bullets. Her capture is expected momentarily. They're on their way. The boss was sure sorry that Dame and her mother got so snooty and made them leave. I could tell he wanted to stay. He said to give you this. Oh, I can't take that. Here, take it. Oh, but I haven't earned it, Red. That's for a couple of weeks' wages, because you lost this job without notice. And he said, I'm to drive you wherever you want to go. Where's your bag? Oh, but, Red, I have nowhere to go. Well, why can't I stay here? You can close the place up, and I'll get a lot of rest. You don't want to stay up here all alone? Oh, but I do. That's just what I want to do. Yeah. Why not, if you want to? The boss will never find out. You wouldn't dare tell him. No, I'll never tell him. But, uh, what will you do here alone? Oh, well, I'll do a lot of reading, and I have the radio. Yeah, I like the radio, too. You can turn it on, and when you don't want to listen, you can turn it off. Well, I better get going. And, Red, thanks for everything you've done for me. Oh, <laughs> it ain't nothing. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, Ren. Hey, when do we get out of here? As soon as I get some idea where my wife is. But ain't that taking chances? I mean, for you and me. That's what Mort always said. But I, I wasn't thinking about myself. I was worrying about you. I'll do my own worrying. That's the end of Mallory. Howard, that's exactly what Mallory wanted us to think. You mean there's a chance it wasn't him? That wasn't Mallory's body any more than it was yours or mine. But you viewed it at the morgue and pretty identified it. Whose body do you think it was? After that train got through with it, it might have been anyone. I wondered how you recognized it so readily. Quickly. And you can chalk up another murder to Mecker. All right, Sheriff. That automobile was nearly stalled at the only railroad crossing where an engineer couldn't see it in time to stop. The automobile headlights were turned off. And Mallory figured we'd never be able to recognize that body. You remember he carried off the doctor's surgical instruments. We better let the newspapers know that Mallory's still alive. Oh, no. No, we won't. That cock and bull story I gave the reporters was for a purpose. To let Mallory think his plan worked. He figured his trick had called off the police. After he thinks we swallowed it, he'll come out in the open to find his wife. And that's where I'm going to be. Sounds all right. I hope it works. anyone come with you? Nope. Well, why are you here? Did Mr. Dunning send you? Nope. Well, did he know you were coming? Nope. Red, must I leave here? Nope. Well, is there anything wrong? Nope. Red, will you please tell me why you came up here? Yeah. yeah. Well, out with it. Well, after a whole week, I figured you'd be all out of food. So I bought you some. Oh, Red, that was a lovely thing for you to do. Ah, uh, it ain't nothing. I figured you'd be all out of food, and you might get hungry. Maybe you're hungry. Would you like me to fix you something to eat? Not me. I could get right back to town before the boss misses me. He's been in a bad humor all week. Why? What's the matter? Anything serious? No, I guess not. Maybe you know how painters act. Ever since we went back to town, he just sits at the studio all the time, paints pictures all day long, then tears them up, and starts all over again. I ain't never seen him act like this before. Has uh, Miss Bannister been around much? Yeah, she came to the studio one day and caught him painting those pictures and got awful snooty and flew out in the huff, like she always does, and banged the door. But he went right back to painting pictures again. What kind of pictures is he painting? I got one. I grabbed it when he wasn't looking. I thought maybe you'd like to see it. Why, this is a picture of me. It's a good one, too, isn't it? That's why I brought it to you. But I didn't pose for it. I guess that's why he's acting so funny. He's trying to paint you from memory. I caught him sitting for a whole hour trying to figure how you looked in a certain way. Uh, uh, hello. How do you do? We didn't expect you. I can see you didn't. Well, hurry up and get me some food. And I want a rub down before dinner. Who gives him the rub down? I do that. I take care of him, and when we're in town, I... I told you all that before. Oh, I get it. It's a gag. <laughs> get out. You mean me? Yes, you. Oh, huh. Now that I see you again, this doesn't begin to do you justice. Have you been up here all this time? And you let me struggle along trying to sketch you from memory. Young lady, you have a lot of explanations to make. Perhaps I have. Ah, oh boy, that's where a pretty face like hers belongs. 
So she's posing for a commercial artist, huh? Yeah, well, how are you going to find her when you just got a picture? You're carrying a photo in your pocket, but that don't tell she is now. Oh, you dumb slug. Don't you suppose some smart detective will see this too? He'll recognize her, he'll know who she is. Then all he has to do is trace her through the magazine people to find out who the artist is that painted this. But suppose she ain't there. Yeah, but I'm afraid she might be. If the cops get there ahead of us, she doesn't know how to take care of herself or she never would have posed for this. Maybe the cop put a picture in that magazine so she'd go there. You're getting dumber every day we stay here. Probably a good thing I'm getting you out of here before you find yourself helping the cops. But just the same, this time I may be right. Now, how could they set a trap for me when they think I'm dead? <laughs> Have you forgotten I was killed by a train? Come on. We're gonna find her. Can you tell me when the artist will return to the city? No, thanks. That won't be necessary. No, no message. I'm afraid my name wouldn't mean anything to Mr. Dunning. No. So goodbye. Well, that locates the artist. Just a chance that Mallory may have seen this picture of his wife. That's exactly what I'm hoping. I'm not taking chances on anybody watching this case. I'm taking charge of it personally and laying my wires before Mallory can get to her. Careful. Don't walk into anything. And good luck to you, Roberts. Getting Mallory and that wife of his is going to be a great deal of satisfaction. And while I'm going, Howard, keep an eye on Julie Leonard and her boy. I will. Now that your husband's dead, I know who you are and all the things you're afraid of. You're going to need all the love and protection I want to give you. Oh, but telling you doesn't free me from all those terrible crimes I'm blamed for. Yes, but you're not a criminal. You're only running away from things that other people did. Bruce, that's all true, but I can't make the police believe that. Now that I've told you these things, it involves you too. They'd say you were harboring a criminal. I can't accept your protection. I can't even stay here. Oh, yes, you can. By remaining here, you'll give me time to prove your innocence. Now that that's all settled, will you stop worrying that pretty little head of yours? Oh, Bruce, you never showed anyone those pictures Red said you painted of me. Darling, I'd forgotten all about those. Then you did show them? Why, right now, your picture's on the front cover of 100,000 magazines all over the country. Oh. The police can't help seeing it and tracing you. Oh, what a dumb thing to do. Oh, Bruce, you didn't know then. They may be on their way here right now. Get your things together. I must get you out of here. Let's hurry. I knew I'd find you. I... I thought you were dead. Well, that was just a trick to throw the cops off. I... I forgot you'd think I was dead, too. Oh, but they may be here any moment. That picture of me on the magazine. Yeah, yeah, that's how I found you. What are you doing? I... I was just leaving. Well, that's swell. You can go with me. Oh, no, Jim. Not with you. Well, you're not going to get away from me this time. Well, Bruce, I mean, Mr. Dunning was just getting ready to take me away. Bruce? Mr. Dunning, the artist? Oh, so that's how it is, huh? You're not even trying to understand. I'm just beginning to understand. You've been up here with him ever since he painted that picture. Oh, no, you're wrong. I didn't pose for that. He did it from memory. Oh, oh he drew it from memory, huh? You mean to tell me a guy can paint that picture from memory with... He's in love with you. You're in love with him. Well, you didn't wait very long after you thought I was dead, did you? He was only trying to help me. It's a funny way to help you. Picture on a magazine cover for every cop in the country to see and find you? He didn't know who I was then. Oh. But he does now, huh? Yes. I explained everything to him. You might explain to him that your husband is here. Alive. 
Oh, Jim, what are you going to do? I'm going to walk you into that room and you're going to tell him who I am. And there's nothing he can do about it. Oh, no, you're not. I won't let you. Are you ready, darling? I'm not quite. You're just telling me, oh, I've changed my mind. I'm not going. But you are going. Oh, don't come in, yeah. Bruce. What's wrong? Be careful, Bruce. He has a gun. It's Jim Mallory. Hi. So you thought I was dead, too, huh? Thanks for painting that picture of my wife. I never would have painted it had I known it would bring you here. One consolation is that it'll bring the police, too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Here, take this. That's all you'll need now. We'll get the rest of this later. Just a minute, Melvary. You ought to know that you can't help her by taking her with you like this. If you think anything of her, you won't do it. If you give me half a chance, I'll work to clear of these charges that are your fault. They are your fault. She is innocent, isn't she? Supposing she is. What business is that of yours? She's still my wife. You're not going to get her into any more jams. That's enough out of you, Dunning. Get away from her. Do you hear me? Get away from her! Oh. Oh, Bruce. Are you Bruce Dunning? That's right. My name's Roberts. I'm an officer. I have a warrant for this woman's arrest. Those aren't necessary, officer. It's all over, Mrs. Mallory. Oh, but uh, I didn't know you were an officer. He said you were a hijacker. That's right, officer. She told me. Did she tell you what happened to my partner when he tried to arrest her husband? Did she tell you how she helped them escape? Yes, she told me all about it. Look, officer, you must have heard part of this man's conversation just before you fired that shot. Now, surely that can be used as evidence to clear her. Well, I'm not here to hold court. She can explain later on. You can take her in the other room. I could have saved you all this tonight if I hadn't used that picture on that magazine. Well, you didn't know about it then. It's not your fault. This had to happen, and I'm almost glad it's over. Yes, and now I can help you too. No. I don't want you to help me anymore. How long were you married to that fellow up there? A little over a year. Why? Funny thing about a bird like that. He'd kill anybody for his own protection. And then for the sake of a woman, he'd expose himself to capture and take a chance like this just to be with her. Do you uh, recognize that handwriting? Well, yes, I wrote that to him when I left him. Well, that letter and evidence should go a long way toward clearing you in court. Thanks for the interruption. Now, now, don't you worry. Everything will be all right. Excuse me. Boss, look at all these magazines and her picture on every one of them. It's a good one, isn't it? Take a couple. No, thanks. Give me your friends. <laughs> Thoughts for the future. From now on, smooth sailing. 